just in the past two weeks. This was not a problem all summer, but for some reason now, um, the birds are using my boat as a sushi bar. Uh, the last three times I've been down, which is once during the week and two on the weekends, actually two during the week, um, half, half eaten fish all over the deck. Um, so when, um, when we take the mast down this fall, um, on the spreaders, I want to put things that'll deter the birds from, from sitting up there and chowing down on their latest catch. It's Tuesday. And I usually don't come down on weeknights unless there's a race or something. But sailing over last weekend, there were some uh, new vibration noises that I hadn't run across before. So I've been thinking about it, and I've been going on the Ericsson Yacht uh, forums. And um, so it, I think it has something to do with the fact that when we're sailing through the water at a decent speed, the propeller will start turning the propeller shaft. Now that's nothing new. It's been making that noise for a year, um, except for the noise is different now. And I was concerned and I was thinking about it. And you know, when I close up the boat, when I go away for the week, I make sure all the seacocks are closed. So there's all the intrusion points into the boat are, are closed. So if a hose were to break or something, it wouldn't leak, but I didn't think about the stuffing box and the fact that the extra vibration that we were experiencing, which was kind of loud and uh, unsettling, might be the stuffing box. So I'm going to take a look at that and see if there's any damage. I couldn't wait till the weekend because I was afraid that, um, you know, if it was leaking and then, you know, the bilge pump would go on and eventually the battery would die and then the boat would fill up with water. But that's not the case. There was no water in the bilge that wasn't there last weekend. And um, when we motored with the boat over the weekend, there was no issue. That vibration did not happen while we were motoring, or that particular sound, I should say. So I don't think it really has anything to do with the stuffing box, but I'm gonna look and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it. Not that I know what I'm looking at, but I know what it looked like, and hopefully it'll still look like by what I remember. Um, but I, I'm not qualified to spot a problem with it, but I will be keeping an eye on it. Of course, it's under my bunk. Okay. That's the wrong way. Okay. Can't see very well in there. Although there is a slight drip very very slight it's just moist what is this place need a good cleaning <clears throat> doesn't smell like fuel which is good although I think the edge of this tank is rusting a bit there's something red down there It's water. <coughs> There's a sort of a red stain, but when I rubbed it, that didn't move. There's just water over the top of it. I gotta put the camera down and use two hands to investigate. <coughs> so, did some wiping up in there. There is a slight smell of fuel in the puddle. It's it's, it's like 99% water, but there's a little bit of fuel in there. So the question is, is it overfill from when I filled the tank up or is there a leak? So I think what I have to do is go in there and clean out the water and uh, get it all dry in there. And then I can see what happens between now and the weekend. Okay, so I cleaned out the area um, around the shaft I mean, it's not really, really clean, but I got all the liquid out of there and a lot of the, the goop. It was pretty nasty in there. I um, got a lot of 
a lot of stuff in the garbage pail like I gotta take with me when I get off the boat now. But now I can, uh, when I come back on the weekend, I'll be able to check that spot and see if anything has accumulated while we were gone. Hopefully I'll, I'll remember to do it before I start the engine and to see if there's any fuel accumulated there. Hopefully not. If there is, we'll have to add to our winter projects, ripping out the fuel tank and uh, seeing where the leak's coming from and maybe getting the corners rewelded or something. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully I won't need to do that. Just one more thing. Right now it's the middle of September. The sailing season here lasts to the second or third weekend of October, at least for me. Some people push it farther. Some people stop, you know, way back at Labor Day weekend. Um, but we, you know, have settled on this. Um, basically, I use the end of the, um, the ECSA racing season. ECSA stands for Eastern Connecticut Sailing Association. And they run races. They're like the um, the overall authority for races in the region. A lot of clubs, yacht clubs, become members of the ECSA. And the ECSA sanctioned races. They have points for the races. And they give out awards for how well you do in the season, that sort of thing. Um, so the ECSA races end the second or third weekend of October. And that's usually when we about call it quits. I like to go to that last race. I mean, I should say, I've only been doing it for like three or four years. But go to that last race. Go to that last, the last race cocktail party. I'm sure there won't be one this year, but it's always a nice thing to see people and to, you know, say so long, see you in the spring. So it's a good race to go to. Also, it's at the Duck Island Yacht Club, and they're a lot of fun, to tell you the truth. So the sail that's on the furler right now is the larger of our two sails. That is a, I think it's 135%. Um, percent is based on distance between the force day and the mast. So a sail that went where the clue of the sail went and reached the mast, and that's as far back as it went, would be considered a 100% sail. So we have a, I think it's a 135 is our big sail, and our small sail is a, uh, one, I believe it's a 100. But it's a furler, so we, you know, stick one sail on the furler at a time. When we bought the boat, the smaller one was on the furler, and then right after we got it, we changed it to the larger one, and we've been using it ever since. If the wind is going to be really strong in the fall for some of these races, I'm going to change it to the smaller sail. I may regret it, but i got to try it, you know. Um... Having a smaller sail going upwind in a heavy wind is is good, but then you then you turn after you round the mark and now you're going downwind, and suddenly a small sail is just too small. Um, some people have many sails and they change the sails during the races. Usually we're running shorthanded. Um, I have either my son or my daughter, or sometimes both. Um, but still, two or three people on the boat, it's hard to do a head sail change in a race. But I might try it anyway, based on the weather reports, just to see how it goes. Um, this year is an odd year for racing. I don't expect to do really, really well. Um, I'm still learning the boat, so this is the time to experiment, uh, not three years from now. So any weird thing I think up, I want to experiment with now. I'd like to talk to you for a moment about flags. A lot of boats display the United States flag. I have one myself. Here's my flag. I just rolled it out and put it on the bench so you can see the size of it. It's a decent sized flag. It's the, um, it's the 50 star and 13 stripe flag. Some boats fly what's called the ensign, which has the 13 um, stars in it with the anchor in the middle. Uh, but that's not what we have. So a lot of boaters have what's known as a personal flag. And they could have many personal flags. Uh, we have one. Let me show it to you. So there it is. It's, you know, gold in color. It's got a red um, mythological beast on it. 
and it's it's kind of large. You can see the size of it. Okay. They have flags that are have to do with their coat of arms or their family name or their yacht clubs or a place where they were born or um, all kinds of things. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the etiquette for flying personal flags when you're also flying the American flag. So notice that our personal flag is bigger than our American flag. And that's important for etiquette. So when I fly this flag, I have to be careful because our American flag is smaller. The etiquette states that the American flag needs to be either larger than or higher than the personal flags flown on the boat. So for example, if I were to fly these two flags on the boat together, and only these two flags, the American flag needs to be above the personal flag because the personal flag is larger. So one way to get around this is to fly only one flag at a time. That will work etiquette wise. But, you know, I like to fly the American flag. You know, that's a tradition on boats. It's not that I'm a, a um, overt um, flag flying person. I, I only am when I'm on the boat. I don't have a flagpole at home. I only have flags on the boat. Stern. American flag is supposed to be flown off the stern, off, you know, at or near the stern of the boat, the back of the boat. So you don't put it way up on the front of the boat. You try not to put it midship on the, on the spreaders. You want to keep it towards the back of the boat. So, for example, I could fly this, um, these two flags, the American flag and the personal flag, off of the backstay. As long as the American flag is higher or bigger, I'm within the bounds of etiquette. Sometimes I see people flying an American flag and a personal flag towards the front of the boat. Sometimes one's on the right, one's on the left, um, and they're about the same size and about the same height, and they're flying them together, and that is, that is in violation of this etiquette I'm speaking of. The American flag needs to be near the stern, needs to be larger than or higher than the personal flags. I've seen large power boats with like the, the fishing outriggers that go way up in the air and they fly a gigantic personal flag and they fly a little American flag over the top of it. Fine, it's higher than the personal flag. Everyone's happy. And as far as sizing goes, if they appear that they might be the same size, they're the same size. I mean, they might not really be the same size, but they're considered the same size. If they look like they're at the same height, even if they're not exactly at the same height, they're considered as at the same height. It has to be clearly higher than or larger than the personal flags. If a boat came by that was from Norway, they would have the Norwegian flag off the stern and they would fly a small American flag up on their spreaders, speaking of a sailboat, if they were visiting and they were, um, they've gone through customs and they, to show that, they fly a small American flag off of the spreaders. If they have not gone through customs yet, they fly a small yellow quarantine flag off the spreaders. But their national flag, the national flag of the captain of the boat, the owner of the boat, is flown off the stern of the boat. It makes it very clear to see when there's foreign visitors, and I love to see that because I run over there and say hello. <laughs> the chance to meet people, um, because you can spot them with the with the flags, it's a it's a very nice thing in boating because boaters are very friendly, and um, if you get the opportunity to meet someone from far away, you usually try to grab it. So, do you remember the LED bulbs we put in the boat in the spring? The light up there, that's incandescent still. But that there is LED. Over at the chart table, it's LED. Um, so what I've learned is that the LEDs that I bought are just not, not bright enough. For example, there's the drawer that has the knives and forks in it. 
and I knew right away that I had a problem because I had to go out and get a flashlight to figure out where the forks were and where the knives were and the spoons. So this light is not bright enough. And those lights don't reach it either. They're pretty good for just the surrounding area and as long as you're not trying to read something. But um, in general, this experiment was a bit of a failure. I mean, it's good that we're using a lot less electricity than we used to use. So the batteries last longer, but I have to find something in, the, in between. I don't wanna um, give a bad name to LEDs. I bought the cheapest ones I could find. And I should have paid more attention to um, how many lumens they emitted. The ones that I bought actually didn't say how many lumens they emitted. It does emit light, just not all that much. Here's just the LED lights. See, it works good down here. Not so much up here. What I would like from you, the viewer, are some comments about what do you want to know about this boat, about how we use it, about sailing in New England or anywhere where it's seasonal. I'm sure the rules are similar up in Canada or down in the Carolinas uh, where, sa where sailing is still seasonal. Um, let me know what you want us to cover and we'll, um, we'll make an examination of those things.